Hi, this is Greg and Paul, and welcome to our seventh LEGO News, Views and Reviews Roundup for the month of January 2020. Now, this month's packed LBB News saw LEGO asking fans to vote on an up-and-coming Star Wars UCS set, and Lepin not changing its spots, and LEGO launching dots. More on that to come soon. Whilst here at London Bridge Bricks, we've been busy bees building dragon boats and Mandalorians, reviewing Y-Wings and magazines and LEGO hauling, as well as streaming with our friends. This is the LBB News, and as Admiral Jean-Luc Picard would say, engage. Starting off the new year, and as is traditional with LEGO, it rolls out their latest and greatest modular set, the LEGO Creator Expert Bookshop, designed by the talented Wes Tolbert. Now it's set number 10270 and is aimed at ages 16 and upwards and comes with a smidgen over 2,500 pieces. Now it retails here in the UK for £149.99, €159.99 for the rest of Europe and in the US for $179.99. So what do we get for all that money and all those bricks? Well, we get ourselves two modular buildings and being a modular, they look nice separately on their own or look their best in my opinion when coupled up to each other with the bookshop on the left and the semi-detached townhouse on the right. Now, great news for you Lego fans out there who don't like stickers as this set comes with none at all, but does include several tasteful printed pieces. Let's start with the townhouse, inhabited by an older couple of minifigures. Opening the front door onto the ground floor and you have a welcoming fire and a small table with a copy of the Lego News and a pot of tea brewing. There are chairs and a reading nook snugly fitted away into the bay window. Turn around and you have an interior door leading down into the basement. Pop upstairs and you have the master bedroom, well furnished with a double bed, dresser, flower pot and a nice mini build of a lamp. At the back of the room, you have a cubby hole and a VLUX style window adjacent to a door leading out onto a small balcony. The colour of the semi-detached house is a striking till, which happens to be a colour code number 107. The same number you'll find over the front door of the house. So that was the home. Let's go next door and pop in and take a look around Birch Book Shop, which I happen to have built recently when I visited my local lug the London AFOLs. During January's AFOL meetup, there's roughly 60 people beavering away, making up three sets of the 10270 bookshop. As you can imagine, it was full of Pepsi, pizza, and lots of cool, diverse people chatting and building. It's a real sociable event, and details of it can be found in the description below. Myself and a couple of AFOL comrades were tasked with building the Birch Books half of the set. Back to the shop, and as you walk in, you have a nicely tiled floor with yellow tiles surrounded by orange and golden tiles pattern. Now, it probably doesn't sound that nice, but in actual fact, it looks really good. On the ground floor, you have the reception area and two clever little builds. Firstly, a tall bookshelf to the right, made using tiles, modified plates, and one by one bricks with studs. The bookshelf looks really effective, and the colours chosen finish it off nicely. Adjacent to the bookshelf, and you have a spiral staircase made using Technic plates with curved ends and studs that connect onto the supports leading up to the mezzanine floor, with more bookshelves and stairs at the other end that take you up to the first floor. Now the room here is a bit of a lounge with a large black reading chair, lamp, grandfather clock, taking up most of the room on offer. Strangely, no books at this level, not even a magazine but we do have a trans clear door leading out to a skinny balcony with another seating area to enjoy the views and Lego life passing by. Back inside and continuing upwards around another spiral staircase, we're brought out onto the loft apartment. Again, no books here too, but we do have a surprising little addition of a chameleon that took his bow during the series 19 of the collectible minifigure series with the Jungle Explorer. This time though, our charming chameleon has color shifted to a more homely shade matching the duvet. Outside, and our minifigures can admire the street scene and the architecture of the two buildings, both being of older ornate mainland European style. The bookshop has a glass front with a Lego humid book Moby Brick displayed. Now I hear it's quite a page turner. Looking upwards, and you have a lantern with a sign of birch books with a one by two gold diamond tile either side. The printed font signage looks perfect and authentic. The large windows and detailed brick and stonework edging upwards to and above the rooftop are finished off in a fine and fancy style and the loft apartment's burgundy roof tiles contrast well against the townhouse navy blue. The house has a smartly designed small bay with a bed of flowers below and round it. Leading up to the front door, you have steps with Lego wrought iron rails either side. 
The buildings are built upon using a 16 by 32 plates and once finished measures 29 centimeters high, 25 centimeters wide and 25 centimeters deep. Around the back of the buildings it's rather basic with a flower bed but in all honesty it's the front where all the detail and action should be and is. The figures reflect the time of year as well with the kitty having been kitted out with a beanie hat and scarf along with a blue checkered winter jacket and a split banana shirt. His accessories in this set is a neat little model plane and if you follow the narrative of the bookshop story his toy plane keeps getting caught up in the tree and lucky for him though his grandfather has a set of ladders to save the day. He also reminds me of George Lucas and comes printed with a smart black and red checkered pattern across his shirt and a grey hairpiece. The grandmother is wearing a smart casual jacket and she has spectacles printed on her face. The shopkeeper has a unique fliffy high volume hairpiece and looks jolly and that's probably down to Romeo who's ready to hand over a bunch of flowers and wearing a smart tie and shirt with braces printed on the front and back of his torso. And that just about covers the ins and outs of set number 10270, The Bookshop. Now, perhaps this bookshop is an extremely high-end bookstore because there really isn't that many books on sale in it. That said, you can only do so much with the space allocated and there are more to be found outside the bookstore stacked on some shelves. This was the first modular set that I've actually ever built and I can absolutely see the appeal of collecting them every year. There is something relatable, wholesome and fun about them. There is a nice narrative about the scene and the figures immersed within it. And if you happen to be creating a LEGO C, let us know in the comments below how you feel this set fits with modular previous LEGO sets. Do you like the colours chosen? The teal colour is definitely the comeback king here and looks striking against the brownness of the ornate architecture of the bookstore. Personally, I had a lot of fun at my LUG meetup building this set and as you've seen, these events are a sociable way of meeting other LEGO enthusiasts and potentially getting your hands on building the latest and greatest sets from LEGO. And as I've said, if you'd like to learn more about the London A-Files, please check the description below. And while you're there, give us a thumbs up. And if you're new to London Bridge Bricks and the LBB news, why don't you hop on and subscribe and become part of the LBB family. Coming up, Lego signs for the Red Devils and the future is bright, the future is orange, with the announcement of two new DK books coming our way. Lego goes dotty and we get rainbow poop and we venture to the final frontier with the International Space Station. So let's take a look at January's Lego Ideas news. Now, for those out there that are new to Lego Ideas, in a nutshell, it's Lego sets designed by fans for fans of Lego. Unraveling that a little further, it's a platform for creative Lego fans to submit and present their projects and have them voted upon by other Lego fans with the hope of achieving the coveted 10,000 support threshold. Then from that stage, their projects goes to review by the Lego Ideas panelists. Now via various variables, they then decide on whether that project makes it to an official LEGO set. And after all that, if your proposal gets picked, it's then given the LEGO designer makeover and goes into development until it's ready to be manufactured. During this part of the LBB news, we discuss what new project sets have achieved that 10,000 threshold and made it through to the most recent review stage. Let's start the new decade with ideas news from the 6th of January, when the entries to the third and final phase of 2019's LEGO Ideas projects to make it into review were announced. This last round produced a dozen unique and brilliant designs from typewriters to trains, steamships to spaceships, rock legends to sitcom legends. There really is something for everyone and reiterates that there really is nothing that can't be built from LEGO using your imagination. So let's recap quickly who made it through. The first to make it through this round was the rock and rolling queen, I Want to Break Free, by Hans S. Brickstein. Then it was over to the classic American sitcom, Seinfeld, 30th Anniversary, by Brent Waller. Then a gaming favourite from Nintendo, with The Legend of Zelda, Bot W. Stables, by Hans Was Yellow First. Next through was another TV cartoon comedy favourite from Futurama, The Planet Express Delivery Ship, by Nicola Stocci and Gabriella Zanotti. Next on the 10k club menu, we had the delightful Disney Ratatouille, Open the Doors, served up by The Brick Project. Then we have the quirky, or should I say quirty, Lego typewriter by Steve Guinness. Then we have one that blasted its way in less than a month to achieve the 10,000 threshold, The Legend of Bionicle, celebrating 20 years of Lego stories by Sakoda. Now the next one through has been moored up for a while now, which is the horse car by Aldrin. 
Then as the days got darker and the weather got cooler during late 2019, we got the beautiful modular Winter Chalet by SDRNet. Going underground and we got the Toronto Rocket Subway Train minifigure scale electric train by Lego Vader 217. Then during December, we got the festive Christmas favorite Home Alone, McAllister's House by Adwin. Then last, but by no means least, we got the Clockwork Aquarium by MJ Smiley. Good luck to all 12 making it through to the review phase. During spring and summer, watch out for those Lego Ideas interviews with each of the talented designers behind those projects. And if you want to dive deeper into those particular projects, check out some previous editions of the LBB News. Let us know in the comments below what your favourite designs are and what ones you would like to give a thumbs up to. And while you're thinking about that, give us a thumbs up as well. During the time that LEGO announced Phase 3 of 2019's reviews, they also announced that soon they will be letting us know the results of 2019's Phase 2 review stage, including the postponed decision for the Anatom Minis product idea by Stephanix. And now it's time to grab your chimney sweep broom and umbrella and get back on track and see who made it through to the 10k club during January. First off the mark was Mary Poppins Cherry Tree Lane by Disney Brick 55. Now this 2,900 piece project is based on the 1964 Disney movie Mary Poppins, starring Julie Andrews as the magical nanny and Dick Van Dyke as the lovable rogue Burt. Disney Brick 55 has faithfully recreated the street view scene from outside the bank's home. With the neighbours either side with the veteran Admiral Boom's famous rooftop that includes a mast and cannon. Now dotted around the diorama you have the cherry cheese with the kids flying their kites in the park area. Now see if you can spot the one with the newspaper clippings. The main house comes with more detail and features which includes some of the main scenes from the Banks' home with the hallway and living room and running up the stairs you're greeted with a kiddies room filled with their toys. Disney Brick 55's product idea comes with eight minifigures. Mary Poppins, Bert, who's probably my favourite, God bless you governor, and the rather dry George Banks, and the long suffering Winifred Banks, and of course you get these adorable kids, Jane and Michael Banks themselves. And we also get their eccentric neighbours, Admiral Boom and Mr Dawes Jr. Check out his other designs, but one in particular is definitely worth a closer look, called the Walk of Hogsmeade, which won a Lego Ideas Grand Prize late last year. Now details of that, and Mary Poppins Cherry Tree Lane idea, can be found in the description below. So what do you get if you have a better utility than a truck with more performance than a sports car? A Tesla concept car of course. And that's just what we have next having charged its way to the 10k support is the Tesla Cybertruck by Brick and Nick. It's taken less than two months from an idea's inception born on a Twitch livestream to making it over the 10k supported line and here's why. The design itself is radically unique and may not be to everyone's taste but this is after all a way of rethinking what cars are and how we utilize them in the future and rebuilding the world is what lego is all about brick and nick set updates at each of his milestones and because his product idea was so popular amongst the lego ideas community they came thick and fast and in doing so his product idea evolved very quickly at 1000 supports he fitted a working driver and passenger door at 4000 he installed the vehicle's interior. Then at 5,000, he added a fold-out ramp and made a new addition to the build, the Cyberquad, which is Tesla's answer to an all-terrain vehicle, otherwise known as an ATV. Now, just a short time later, and we got to 7,500, and this update includes minifigures of Mr. Tesla himself, Elon Musk, and the Cybertruck designer, Franz von Holsen, holding the infamous sledgehammer, Metal Ball. This approach just goes to show you how conceptual your initial Lego idea proposal can be in the first instance and over time developing it further. Now he's also done a top notch job of getting traction for his idea as well with lots of non Lego websites featuring this set such as CNET and TechChurch. Tesla's mission has always been to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. This aligns with Lego Group's goal of sustainability and even a positive impact on the planet. As of yet, Electric vehicles have only been marginally represented in the Lego set catalog. Now the striking yet fun design of this Lego Cybertruck would be an amazing way to get kids and adults alike excited about EVs and all the good that they can do for our environment. And just like the real life Cybertruck, now we think here at London Bridge Bricks that this is a bold design. So good luck to Brick and Nick for the next round. And if you'd like to find out more about Brick and Nick and what he's all about, Check out episode 92 of the Bricks King podcast, 
where Matt interviews Nick and talks about his Cybertruck adventure and how he got started on Twitch. Links to that can be found in the description below. And by the way, if you like what we're doing here at the LBB News, why not stick around and hit that subscribe button and check the bell of notifications so that you know when we send out new content. Away from Lego ideas, at least for just a little bit, because now it's time for something completely different. And our final roundup of stories from January. Kicking off, here in England, when you think big football Premier League teams with an immense big fan base, the big answer you will arguably always get is Manchester United. Now, Lego revealed their collaborative tie-in with Man U with the announcement of a big, big Lego set. It's called Old Trafford, the name of Manchester United's home football ground, and is set number 10272 and can be yours for £249.99 or $299.99 or €269.99 for the rest of Europe. The set is aimed at 16 and above and comes with a big part count of 3,898 pieces. That's over 27 bags and a big instruction manual that's nearly 370 pages. Unfortunately, it comes with a big sticker sheet with 70 stickers to apply to what is a substantial, big, impressive, displayable model measuring 45 centimeters wide and 39 centimeters deep. All four stands, including the Alex Ferguson and Stratford End, are assembled in a modular style. The Trinity statue is there featuring George Bess, Dennis Law and Sir Bobby Charlton who faced the Red Devils legendary manager Sir Matt Busby standing in front of them over the entrance to the East Stand. And if you're a VIP member and you happen to have bought this during January you automatically would have got a free gift with purchase of the United Trinity in minifigure form. Old Trafford nicknamed the Theatre of Dreams is an interesting looking display piece and some might say it's a bit niche but Manchester United has a huge global following and it's a great way to get football fans and general fans of football introduced into LEGO, and perhaps vice versa. Before we leave Old Trafford, LEGO are running a Build United competition, and all you simply have to do is assemble an idea of something celebrating the Red Devils. Now this could be anything from the team badge to the team's mascot, the winner stands to win, exclusive Manchester United merchandise, the new LEGO Creator Expert 10272 Old Trafford set of course, and the Lego Creator Expert 10270 Bookshop, which we mentioned earlier. You can also get the Lego Creator Expert 10255 Assembly Square, and that's a great prize, and a heck of a lot of Lego. All entries have to be in by February the 20th, and the winners will be announced during March. So good luck to everyone who enters. Away from Old Trafford now, and it's time to venture upwards into orbit when during early January we started to get official leaked pictures of the LEGO Ideas winning entry, the International Space Station, designed by LEGO fan designer Christophe Rouge. You may recall last year, as part of the 10-year LEGO Ideas anniversary, a fan vote for sets that had previously achieved 10,000 supports, but hadn't gone on to be picked at the review stage to be manufactured into actual LEGO sets. Now this all changed when the team at the LEGO Ideas Review Board held a special review and selected four sets to be revisited but this time voted upon by us fans. Those four product ideas were Small Yellow by Nathan Sawyer, the Red Hot Favourite Stitch by Legoholic, as well as the retro looking Sega Classic Arcade Machines by Spacey Smoke. But the eventual winner chosen was International Space Station by XCLD, and the rest as they say is history. And so during January and after the leaks and cool teaser videos, Lego finally announced to the world their official new Lego Ideas product giving it set number 21321, which we'll be retailing here in the UK for £64.99 and in the US for $69.99. Inside the box, you get six numbered bags and a 128 page instruction booklet with a feature on Christophe Rouge. Aligned with other Lego idea sets, there are no stickers to be had. Now the vast majority of the 118 printed elements are the three elemental types of solar panels. You also get two micro figures with the same prints as those using the modern Lego classic Saturn V. But for me personally, the outstanding print is that of the UCS style nameplate. And I really hope that future Star Wars sets copy this approach, fingers crossed. The finished model is an impressive, intricately detailed display of the ISS, measuring 49 centimeters long and 31 centimeters wide and constructed from just 864 pieces and perched on a Lego stand. You also get a nice small build of a US space shuttle, reminiscent actually of the one that used in the Women of NASA build. 
This year marks the 20th anniversary that humans have inhabited the space station. Now, if you factor in that this set was revisited because LEGO Ideas was celebrating its 10th anniversary, and it would seem that the planets were aligned just right for Christoph's idea to become a reality. Now, talking of reality, at the very end of January, Christoph Rouge took part in the signing event over in Nuremberg in Germany. And as of February the 1st, the International Space Station is available to buy. Let us know in the comments below your thoughts and feelings on this new LEGO Ideas set. Will you be buying it? Or do you feel that the LEGO Ideas theme is leaning just a little bit too heavily on its space creations? And while you're there, give us a thumbs up as well. Sticking with space themes and fan votes a little longer, LEGO tweeted out during last month that fans could vote for the next instalment of the Ultimate Collector series from the LEGO Star Wars theme. There were three choices to choose from, the first being the huge Nebulum B escort frigate that first appeared in the Star Wars classic The Empire Strikes Back. The next choice on offer is an Imperial workhorse, the TIE Bomber. Now, once again, this ship featured in The Empire Strikes Back when Darth Vader was pursuing the Millennium Falcon through an asteroid field. Next up, and an absolute classic among prequel and Clone Wars fans with the choice of the Republic gunship. Then, during the selection process, you're asked why did you select this particular model to become a UCS set? Then finally, you had to add which minifigure you would like to see included in the set and why. And during January, you had just one week to apply your vote and thoughts as to why. Well, here at London Bridge Bricks, Paul and I talked it over, and I have to admit the frigate came close, but ultimately, we voted for the Republic gunship. And the reason behind their selection? Well, we've not seen a Star Wars set in the Clone Wars era for some time, and there hasn't been a prequel UCS set since way back in 2010 with Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter. And LEGO does tend to play a little safe when it comes to selecting its Star Wars UCS sets. And that's probably why whatever LEGO selection ever is will always be met with a certain amount of groans and contention. The Republic gunships in the past have been excellent play sets, but to have a UCS variant would prove, in our opinion, to be popular amongst fans of Star Wars and several big YouTubers such as MR Productions and Solid Bricks have certainly lent their support to the gunship choice as well. We also considered the rich pool of minifigures you could choose from, from Anakin Skywalker, General Kenobi, Mace Windu, Yoda, and of course Captain Tarkin as he was then. Now, obviously not forgetting, there are also clone troopers like Captain Rex, Commander Wolf, and with all those choices, it would be hard to disappoint Star Wars fans. That said, the other two candidates are excellent as well. And who's to say that LEGO doesn't choose those sometime in the future themselves? After all, they now know in which the order that fans want them, and I hope those stats become public knowledge sometime down the line. What LEGO didn't mention was when this particular fan-voted set would be released. Now, it's Probably unlikely, but we're hoping it's this year, because dependent on what else comes out this year, could have swung the vote in a different direction. Time will tell. One thing is for sure, for LEGO to have had those three choices up for grabs would have required them to have some pretty good prototype product mocks of their own, just ready to be further developed. Now wouldn't those be nice to see? When we find out the results, you'll be the first to know. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter for up-to-date news on LEGO and us. And just in case you didn't know, this February sees the final season of the long-awaited Clone Wars airing on Disney+. Plus. But the UK and the rest of Europe still have to wait with bated breath until they can officially watch this, and of course, the highly acclaimed Mandalorian. Coming down a little closer to Earth, and we got the announcement of a new Marvel set based on the up-and-coming Black Widow movie starring Scarlett Johansson. It's aimed at ages 7 and upwards, and is set number 76162, Black Widow's helicopter chase, and comes with 271 pieces. Now of those, we have three minifigures, Black Widow herself, Yanana Belova, and the Taskmaster, and three builds including a tiny buggy, a dark blue sporty motorbike, and a black sleek, heavily armoured looking Chinook style helicopter. The set will retail for roughly £25 here in the UK and $29.99 in the US and €29.99 Euros for the rest of Europe and will be available from March. Now so far, this appears to be the only set coming from the forthcoming Black Mirror movie, but if that changes, watch this space. Crashing down to earth now and some corporate news with details of the LEGO Group winning multiple final decisions in its intellectual property lawsuits against the much maligned Lepin. Now, as you know, Lepin have over the years been not only copying Lego sets, but stealing their artwork and reselling them as cheap made knockoff versions of Lego. This particular appeal by Lepin upholds previous court case decisions that are outlined and defined in November 2018. And because of those favorable decisions, 
Lepin have now been ordered to pay those damages to the LEGO Group and make a public apology immediately upon issuance. Robin Smith, Vice President and General Counsel to China and Asia Pacific for the LEGO Group said, intellectual property rights are very important to the LEGO Group and we constantly strive to enforce and protect our LEGO trademarks, copyrights, designs and patents. We are pleased with the court's final decision and appreciate the efforts from all stakeholders in the case. It also shows the Chinese authorities' commitment in creating a favorable business environment for multinational companies. The LEGO Group is dedicated to enforcing intellectual property rights against copiers and infringers and to protect its consumers. It has obtained many positive outcomes in its intellectual property enforcement actions in China in the past several years. In October 2017, the LEGO Group won a case in Shantou Intermediate Court against Bella, a Chinese toy manufacturer, for infringing and copyrights of its LEGO Group and for unfair competition. In another case decided earlier in July 2017, the LEGO logo and the LEGO word mark were recognized by Beijing Higher Court as well-known trademarks within China. This is a good result for LEGO. However, we have learned that Lepin has recently changed its name from Lepin to, shall we say, a less catchy new logo. Now, how that affects things, we're not sure. However, it will insinuate that copying and infringements will continue, albeit under a new, less well-known name. Now, as the name change story unfolds further, we'll certainly keep you up to date here on the LBB News. Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts and feelings are around Lepin. And if you're new to the LBB News, why don't you become part of the LBB family and hit that subscribe button. Away from litigation and more literature now, as last month we had the announcements of two new books coming out later this year. The first one being a must-have for LEGO minifigure collectors. The LEGO minifigures a visual history. Now it's an update to the 2013 book and will be published by DK Books and arguably one of the best things about this book will be the exclusive orange colored classic Spaceman minifigure sporting an all bright orange attire. The description goes on to say that this updated edition highlights the best minifigures from every year since 1978. Starring more than 2,000 of the most popular and rare minifigures from the LEGO minifigure series and themes including Ninjago, LEGO Movie, LEGO Star Wars, LEGO City, LEGO Harry Potter and many more. Now discover the evolution of the minifigure design from past to present and explore those accessories and sets. The 256 page visual history book is authored by David Liebowitsch and it's available now from Amazon on pre-order price guarantee for the 1st of October this year. The next book announced is a game from DK Books and a game coming out on October the 1st and is a continuation of LEGO's 2019 big initiative. The book is called LEGO 100 Ways to Rebuild the World, Get Inspired to Make the World an Awesome Place. And the description goes on to say, build a LEGO tree for inspiration and then help plant a real tree. Create a Lego emoji to make your friends smile and gather up your family and play a Lego game together. Make a Lego desk pot to help keep your room tidy. Learn about endangered species and then build your favorite ones with Lego bricks. How will you start to rebuild the world? The 96 page hardcover book looks like it's full of fun little builds with a big message and it's authored by Helen Murray. And like I said, it's available from the 1st of October and is available now from Amazon on pre-order price guarantee. Let us know in the comments below if you collect these LEGO books. Personally, I'll be buying the minifigures visual dictionary. That's a must have for me and the orange minifigure makes it even more worthwhile. And don't forget, you can keep up to date with us and the news here at London Bridge Bricks by following us on Instagram and Twitter. You'll find details for those down in the description below. And finally, LEGO launched a new theme called Dots in collaboration with the artist Camille Walala that's aimed towards the arts and crafts market. Lena Dixon, Senior Vice President and Head of Product and Marketing Development at the LEGO Group, says about the collaboration with Camille, we're extremely excited to introduce LEGO Dots as a new arts and crafts building concept, giving children a creative canvas for social, self-expressive play with endless, ever-changing patterns, colors, and designs. Now, as someone who epitomizes how confidence in your creativity can have a tremendous impact, Camille was perfect to collaborate with to announce it to the world. She has created something extraordinary and immensely fun that we can't wait for our fans to explore and be inspired by. The reception from the LEGO community has been incredibly positive. Adults like the theme because they offer some colorful, unique elements and you can potentially build something useful. And kids love them for the ease of making something fun, colorful and enabling them to express themselves. Dots is all about gaining confidence, failing, starting again, making it a success. The new LEGO Dot range 
will be available from March the 1st and will include wearables such as a rainbow bracelet, which I think will be quite popular, funky animals bracelet, and they'll be retailing for around five pounds. Other sets created for room decor include a jewelry holder and a pineapple pencil holder, which is probably my favorite from the range. Now those will be retailing anywhere between 13 and 18 pounds. There are also booster poly bags with decorated tiles retained for just four pounds. Now these will contain 109 pieces and have some great little prints essential for making beautiful patterns such as rainbow poop, which is of course an essential print for everyone. And with that, I can't wait to see how those special elements feature in future mocks. The launch of the new Dots theme kicked off a specially constructed Lego House of Dots art installation here in London's Coal Drops Yard near King's Cross. Now the House of Dots comprises of five rooms, a living room, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, and a unique Dots disco room. And all those being constructed from ship containers in which everything from the walls and floors to the rugs, frames and furniture has been customized in a mashup of Lego dots and Walala's distinctive style. And to finish it off, guests to the house can exit to an eight foot slide down the installation. At the end of January, we'll be venturing to the Lego dots house to take a closer look. So please do tune in and watch what we get up to. And that is just about the end of this episode of the LBB News. Looking ahead to February from LEGO, Brickheads makes a comeback with Disney's Donald Duck, Pluto and Goofy. We'll start hearing more news surrounding the much anticipated Iron Man bust and new exciting Technics Lamborghini set number 42115. And if you're in America, tune in on February the 5th for LEGO Masters, hosted by the LEGO Batman voice himself, Will Arnett. And looking ahead from London Bridge Bricks, we will have double bubble and transatlantic live streams. We'll also be reviewing the new Lego City ice cream truck and checking out the new official Lego magazines. And somewhere in and around all that stuff, we'll have several speed builds as well. This has been the LBB News for January 2020. Please do comment with your views and suggestions below. We always read them and we certainly always reply to them. We'll leave you now with some videos that we think you might like.